And there's like two or three blocks, a little bit of clips on them. Maybe for two blocks, it's like a little bit of 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 a little
I thought I was, I was just like, okay, I'm just going to do whatever this button I had access to right there. This is something to do. It was just like, you know, we had time to maybe like give me something. So on the screen, I actually summarized many of the important equations for midterm two for you to uh, take a look. Okay, so Remember time, go back to and watch the video. Those are the things that you should definitely know uh, by now. Okay. And if you have any questions, now is a good time to actually ask. Let me copy that so you can have you can scan the QR code too. Yeah, <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to 
Okay, so uh, let's get started. All right. Uh, I hope everybody have a wonderful, wonderful spring break. Everybody's actually energized and ready for your return too. Okay, so on the board is actually some of the equations so far that you wanted to use with all the calculations. Okay, so I think the Q&A, there's actual questions. Are there actually a uh, formula sheet? Okay, so as we say many times now, okay, so under every single in-person hangout, the first page, you have all the questions you will need for your midterm too. Okay, so if you don't, if you want to actually look for the uh, formulas, those are the three sheets that uh, you want to actually uh, get very familiar with. Okay, if you can actually understand all the equations on those sheets, you are fine. Okay. And today we want to actually. Um, I have some suggestions for you. Okay, so midterm two is section next week. I hope everybody already got your spot. Okay, this week we are going to finish chapter fifteen. In fact, this uh, lectures we are going to finish chapter fifteen. Okay, so if you have a chance to actually go through the contents on YouTube, there's actually only four short videos for chapter fifteen, and it's actually really easy to follow. Okay, and calculation wise, it's actually a lot easier. So the most difficult one, most calculation heavy will be actually in the chapter 15, where you see the questions of buffer. Okay, so those are the parts I think we're going to spend more time uh, this Thursday to get everybody more familiar with the um, how to actually identify what kind of solution that you have and then how do you do those calculations. Okay. So let's actually uh, what we're going to do this week, and then this Friday. So typically the new office hour is Thursday 10 to 12. Okay, but because next week is actually a midterm too. So on Fridays, I will do the uh no open door uh office hour. Basically, you can just walk into my office on Friday anytime. I will leave around 5 p.m. I will be in my office around 6. I have a meeting between 10 to uh, 10 to 11. So 10 to 11 is actually only time I won't be able to do the office hour. All the other times, feel free to actually join. Okay. The other thing is actually on the April 2nd and April 4th. Okay. I have some family issues. I won't be able to actually come here to give the in-person lecture. So there are actually two ways to resolve that problem. One is that I find someone else to give the lecture. Okay. And so you can have still have the in-person lecture. The other way is actually I just post uh, some recordings. Okay, so basically I give you lectures using the uh, recorded videos. Okay, so which one do you prefer? Recording. Okay, then we'll do the recording. I'll just post it on Teams, then everybody have access to it. All right. And then. What we're going to do today is actually we're going to finish the concept of KSP or the product of solubility or solubility product. Okay. And then there are actually four different type of questions we want to go through. So we're going to introduce those important concepts and then let's just do a lot of questions together. Okay. And then we're going to also to start looking at some of the questions in the review hangout. Okay. So in the review hangout, question number 13 to 18 belongs to chapter 15. Okay, so those are the questions we want to actually uh, go through today. Okay, so any other questions? No? Okay, so let's get started then. So chapter 15, there's actually only four type of questions you want to actually know. The first one is actually to calculate the KSP. Okay. So in order to actually calculate KSP uh, correctly, one of the most important things is actually you need to actually write out the proper chemical equations. Okay, because different kind of chemical equation will give you a very different kind of um 
KSP equation. So KSP is just a equilibrium constant, okay? But because right now in this chapter, we talk about the insoluble salt, okay? Therefore, typically the equation I'm going to see is actually on the left-hand side for your reactant, you have this insoluble salt, okay? And then it's going to exist in the pure solid forms. Therefore, that specific, specific species doesn't go into your equilibrium constant equation, okay? So, let's give you an example, okay? A, G, C, L become A, G plus plus C, L minus. Okay, so A, G, C, L is actually an insoluble salt, okay? But once it dissociates, it's going to produce A, G plus and the C, L minus. And then the KSP, which is actually equilibrium constant, was simply the product of AG concentration to the first power times CO minus concentration to the first power. Okay. So when we talk about the solubility, it's actually the solubility of your reactant. Okay. So in this case, if this is actually solubility of S, then it's actually after it dissociates, it's going to produce less much AG plus let much Cl minus. Therefore, in this simple case, your KSP was simply equals to S times S equals to S squared. Okay. However, if today you have more complicated, let's say you have more complicated uh, species, for example, Ag2 Cr. 207. Okay, once this dissociate count to Ag plus plus Cr207 to minus. Okay, your KSP will equals to Ag plus to the second power times Cr207 to minus to the first power. Okay, so again, we assume the solubility of your reactant is S. Okay, so once it dissociates, then your AG is going to get 2S based on the solid chemistry coefficient. Okay, because you have 1 to 2 ratio, right? So if this is actually minus S, then you're going to produce plus 2S for your AG plus. And then for your CR207, 2 minus, this was simply S. Okay. So once you put the things in, then your solubility will equals to 2s to the cube, s to the first power, so that you have 4s cube. Okay, so this is actually the things that you need to actually become very good at. You need to know, okay, once your reactant, once your insoluble salt, once it dissociates, Okay, what are the species is going to give? Okay, so you will know when you write out the solubility for your product, you know what is the S it should be. Okay, so in the second equation, many students will actually get confused. Okay, they don't know when to put two S for less flexible terms. Okay, therefore you cannot do the calculation correctly. So those are the things that you want to be careful about. Okay, so. The other very important concept that we should have is that when we write out or when we can compute all this uh, solubility product constant KSP, you must calculate it using the molar solubility. Okay, so there are two very commonly seen units you're going to see for this chapter. One is actually molar solubility, and you're going to see the unit of moles per liter okay so that's a unit of this molar solubility but sometimes or often you're going to see this gram per liter okay when you do all these calculations you must do using the molar solubility okay if you were given the gram solubility inside your questions then you need to actually first convert this one into the molar solubility. Okay? And the way you convert it is actually divided the mass of your solute by its formula weight. Okay, So you need to actually 
using this grain divided by the formula weight to calculate the number of moles, right? And then make sure you have unit of liters. Then you can check get the molar solubility. So those are the things that you want to be very, very uh, careful so you can get this type of question correct. Okay. So let's actually the first type of question you're going to encounter. And those pretty much are the, all the necessary information you will need to know. Any questions? Yes, yes. Okay, the four hour weight is actually the molar mass. All right. Okay, so let's look at the first questions. The solubility of silver dichromate at a given temperature is 5 gram per 100 ml. Calculate the KSP at this temperature. Okay, and then the second line is just okay. You want to actually check the negative law so you can get a P KSP. Okay, so how do you do this? The first thing is actually to know what is actually the chemical equation to write, right? So of course you need to know what is silver dichromate. Does everybody know what silver dichromate is? Okay, so what do we do? Okay, so this is actually something I want to actually mention to you. Okay, sometimes you see these are tough questions, okay, that it actually give you a it's just a simple name based on our syllabus you need to know the chemical formula. Okay. But sometimes, like this one is actually a good example. Okay. The silver dichromate is not a commonly seen chemical compound. Okay. So most of the time, it will give you the chemical formula directly. Okay. So this one is actually the AG2. CR2O7. Okay. So once you see these things, once you see the, of course, the keyword in here is actually solubility, right? So once you see this keyword solubility, it must belong to chapter 15. Okay. So the first thing you do is actually write down, okay. Write down the equation. Okay, can you actually predict once this species dissociated, what would you actually produce? Okay, here the most commonly seen element is actually silver. Okay, silver want to exist in the one plus form, right? And you know you have two silvers. Okay, it's going to go with a big chunk of uh, anion species, right? So all you want to write down here is actually CR207. You can see this is actually overall neutral molecule. Once it dissociate, this is actually two times one plus plus two for your AG, right? That means this one need to be two minus. The coefficient in front of it should be one. Okay, so you're probably not actually using your homework to practice this skill. Okay, it's like a very important step for this chapter. Okay, but once you do a few times, you actually uh, get used to it, then you can actually write all these equations properly. All right, so you want, to, you want to calculate what is the KSP, right? So KSP is just the equilibrium constant. The species on the left is actually existing in the pure solid form. Therefore, it doesn't go into your KSP. Okay, so your KSP was simply the product of this, right? So you need to write this Ag plus to the second power times Cr2 O7 to minus to the first power. Okay, so let's say equation I'm going to use. All right. And then we know the solubility of your Ag plus will be 2s, right? Because the coefficient between your reactant and the Ag plus is one to two ratio, right? Therefore, you know this will be two times of your solubility raised to a second power. For this one, because the ratio is actually one to one, 
therefore you know it will be simply s to the first power. Okay, so if you organize this one, you're going to get four s cubed. Okay, so if you can help, if, so all you need to do is actually put in the molar solubility into this equation, then you can actually get your KSP for this specific, specific uh, reaction. Okay. Then when you're looking for the solubility, what you see is five gram per hundred mil. Okay, so this is actually a standard unit for the gram solubility. Okay, this is actually not the one you can use to compute your KSP, right? To compute your KSP, you must use molar solubility okay so in order to do this you want to actually do five gram divided by the molar mass or the formula weight of a g2 cr207 okay so this one if you do the calculation using your periodic table you should get a number of 431.73 grand per mole. Okay. So to convert your grand solubility to molar solubility, what you do is actually you divide the mass by the formula weight. So you get number four. Okay. Divided by the volume in liters. Okay. So 100 mil will be. 0.1 liters, okay? And then once you compute that, you will be able to get a value of 0.116, okay? Molarity, okay? Once you get this, this will be your molar solubility, okay? Which is the S here, right? So what you do is actually four times point one one six to the cube, and after you do like computations, then you will be able to get a value of point zero zero six two. Okay, but the things that the x for is actually you want you to further get the p k s p which is negative log of your KSP 0 0.0062. Okay, so once you do that, you can get your PKSP as 2.20, 2 2.21, okay? So this will be the answer you are looking for. All right, so recap. How should I handle this top portion? Okay, first the key word is solubility and then KSP. Okay, you should start with identify what the chemical species that you have and write out the corresponding chemical equations. Okay, it is very important to write out the proper chemical equation because they allow us to write out the solubility terms of individual product. Okay, so once you have that then you should be able to write out your KSP equation without any problem, okay? And then you should be able to actually derive what is the equation you should use to calculate your KSP. The very last thing we talk about here is actually when you try to calculate, compute the number, the solubility must be in the unit of molar solubility. Okay, so if you have, if you see the grand solubility in your questions, you need to actually divide the mass by the molecular mass, and then make sure you divide it further uh, to the solution volume in liters. Okay, once you get that, just put it back, then you can get the answer uh, correctly. Okay, so those are the kind of thought flow, how you should be able to solve these kind of questions uh, easily. Mm -hmm. Molar mass.
AG2CR2O7. This this guy. Okay. Everybody's fine? Okay, good. Okay, so let's actually the very common thing that question is definitely encountered in this chapter. Okay. Any any questions? Okay, so if not, then let's go to the second type of question you're going to encounter. Okay, so the second type is actually close to this predict where the the precipitate uh, precipitates will form or not type of questions. Okay, so in this type of questions, you always need to compute uh QSP. Okay, and then you're always seeing these KSP values in your questions. Okay. The idea is that when you compute your QSP, if it is larger than your KSP, then you're going to see the precipitate to form in the solution. Okay, if it is not, okay, meaning if your QSP is smaller than your KSP, then the concentration of your uh, species, the, 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 uh, the ionic species is actually low, then you won't be able to form the precipitate. Okay, so P is actually compute the QSP. If it's larger than your KSP, precipitate will form. Okay, so those are the large flow. Okay. Good question. Okay, good question. Okay, so Typically, okay, you're going to have a pair on. Okay, I use A plus and a NI on B minus. Okay, once these things um, interact, they are going to have form the AB. Okay, where AB is actually the solid that's going to uh, give you the uh, precipitate. Okay, so if the QSP, which is actually a product of these two, Okay, if it's actually larger than the KSP given inside the questions, then you are going to see the precipitate. Okay, so let's look at questions so you will see uh, what I mean. Okay, so this question says the KSP of AGCL at certain temperature is 1.6 times 10 to the next 10. Okay. Consider a solution that has this and that, okay? And you ask you whether the precipitation will form or not. Okay, so when you read these questions, okay, the first sentence tells you what? Your AGCL solid, okay, if you have count AG plus, plus your CL minus, where the KSP is going to equal to your AG concentration times your CL minus concentration is going to equal to 1.6 times 10 to the negative 10. Okay, so the first sentence actually tells you all this information. Okay, so when you see the first sentence, you want to make sure you can try write out all this by yourself. Okay, so KSP, is really the product of your soluble species, right? And in this case, it will exist in the ionic form, okay? So now, the second part of the question, okay? Okay, before we jump to that, I want to actually focus on this. In this KSP, the things that it cares about is what? the concentration of your AG plus, the concentration of your CL minus, right? So those are the two species that you want to focus on, okay? So for this type of questions, you are going to mix two solutions and ask you whether you're going to see the precipitate, okay? So the first solution you have is actually certain concentration of CaCl2. Right? So CaCl2. Okay. 
So CA is what? The 2A group, right? Uh, the third element in the second column, right? So 2A group, so it's actually a, uh, uh, typically it's going to dissociate 100%, okay? It's actually a soluble salt, okay? So you should so see that, okay, this will be CA2 plus, plus 2C, L minus. Okay, so it says you have this species. Its concentration is actually one point zero times ten to the negative seven. Okay, so this species is going to dissociate hundred percent. Okay, so once it dissociates hundred percent, then you should know that the calcium concentration will be one point zero times ten to the negative seven. Cl minus, what will be the concentration of the Cl minus? This is actually the part that you want to be careful. Okay, this is the part that the coefficient matters. Okay, yeah, so because the coefficient is actually one to two, right? Therefore, the concentration of your Cl minus is going to equal to two multiply one times 10 to the negative seven. Okay. So this actual part that you want to be very, very careful. Okay, and then apparently this is actually the number you need to actually put in to compute your QSP, right? Okay, so the other solution is actually AgNO3. So this will be count Ag plus plus NO3 minus. Okay, so again, this is actually a soluble salt. Therefore, the concentration of your HNO3 will equal to a concentration of your H plus since their coefficient is actually one to one. Okay, so the concentration of your H plus in this case will equal to one times 10 to the negative third. Okay, so this will be actually the concentration that you want, you want to use, okay? So using these two, you can actually compute the QSP, okay? Where is actually your AG concentration is two times 10 to the negative seven. Oh, sorry, it's one times 10 to the negative seven. Your CL is actually two times AG is minus three. This is two times 10 to the negative seven. Once you do that, you get a QSP of 2 times 10 to the negative 10. OK. So once you get your QSP, then you want to compare to your KSP, right? Your KSP is 1.6 times 10 to the negative 10. Since your QSP is 2 times 10 to the 10, therefore your QSP is larger than your KSP, meaning you are going to have precipitate form. Okay. All right, so let's recap about the concept that we should have here. Okay, so in this type of questions, it typically contains two parts of information, okay? The first part tells you what is the KSP value, okay? And it also tells you what are the important species that you should actually pay more attention to, right? So in this example, it's actually tells you the KSP of AGCL is certain number, right? Therefore, you know when you compute your QSP, you should only focus on the species of AG+, plus and then the CL minus, okay? And then to get the information of your AG plus and CL minus, those information will be revealed in the second part of the question. Okay, so if you see here, you can see the CACL2 apparently is going to tell you the concentration of CL minus, right? The AGNO3 apparently is actually going to tell you the concentration of AG plus. Okay, so all you do is actually, okay, compute the Ag plus concentration, Cl minus concentration for these two species, 
and then you can con you can actually compute the QSP. Then by comparing your QSP to your KSP, then you can actually predict whether the precipitate will form or not. All right, so those are the some of the things that you want to actually pay attention to. So you can just solve these tough questions uh, without any problem. Okay. Any question for this? No? Very simple, right? Okay. Question number three, or question type number three, is actually a common iron effect. Okay. So in this type of questions, okay, it's going to ask you if I change the pH of the solution, how will it actually change the solubility? Of the salt. Okay. So this table summarizes everything. Okay. So let's say you have a salt AB. Okay. It's going to dissociate, become A plus in the aqueous solution plus B minus in the aqueous solution. Okay. And then it's going to ask you if I add in. If I change my pH, okay, meaning I change my proton concentration, okay, how will that actually affect the reaction? Okay, do we're going to have increase of solubility or not? Okay, so typically, what this says, okay, you're going to see this the pH effects in the question. Okay, what it means is actually if I add in H plus, okay, how will it actually affect the solubility? Of your salt. Okay, so in this case, the salt is actually your AB, right? So, one very important concept when we do the titration just lab if you add in proton, okay, into a solution, okay, the proton will do what? The proton will try to interact with base, right? So what kind of base? Strong base or weak base? Or both? Okay, the answer is actually, if you have H plus goes in, okay, it will interact with all kinds of base, regardless is strong or weak. Okay? So, these are the three species, okay? The anion species, they are going to have this for the salt, okay? So once you have these things dissociate, you have this K ion and this anion, okay? And then you add in H plus, okay? The H plus will actually interact with your phase, right? So if you are B minus, it is a base, regardless it's a strong base or weak base, it will interact with your H plus. Okay, so once you interact with your H plus, that means actually this one will be consumed, right? So based on the Lichtenstein principle, if you actually keep removing your B minus, the reaction will move to a direction to compensate like change, right? Since right now it's keeping, you keep removing your B minus, therefore the reaction is going to move to the right, okay? And they will actually lead to the increase of your solubility, okay? So this table basically says, okay, if your anion is OH minus, which is a strong base, okay? When you add in your H plus, then you know your solubility is going to increase. Okay. Similarly, the conjugated base of a weak acid, you can just translate this will be actually a weak base solution, right? So since you have a weak base solution, when you add in your H plus, the solubility will increase as well. Okay. The very last one is the conjugated base of a strong acid, okay, it will be neutral, 
Okay, so let me actually there's actually no phase to interact with the edge plot, right? So it doesn't have effect. Therefore, you can see the net result is actually no effect. Okay, so those are the key concepts that we should have for this type of questions. Okay, any does this make sense? Any question for this? No? Okay, let's look at one like one problem, okay? Okay, which of the following compound will have different solubility with a change in pH? Okay, so I think this problem is actually not very accurate. Okay, I want to actually re uh, revise this question a little bit. Okay, which of the following compound will have If you put it in a lower pH solution, okay, how will it actually affect the solubility of the following compound? Okay, so when you see this lower pH, okay, you should translate that you're actually adding in more H plus into your solution. Okay, everybody fine with this concept? Lower pH meaning you add more H plus into your solution. Okay, higher pH meaning what? Yes, more OH minus into your solution, okay? So here, if I say I want to actually go to a lower pH, meaning I'm adding in more H plus, okay? Then the things you want to actually consider is actually for these five different Salt, okay, once they dissociate to actually produce strong base or weak base, okay, if it does, then you know the solubility will be changed, okay. So let's look at this. Once this dissociate, I hope you see it's going to produce Ag plus and then the NO3 minus, right. Then if you look at this anionic species, if this anionic species basic or neutral, how do you know it is basic or neutral? You want, yeah, it's neutral, okay. The answer is actually neutral, but how do you know it's neutral? Yeah, because this is actually a conjugated base of a strong acid, right? So you know it is the conjugated base of HNO3, right? HNO3 is actually one of the seven strong acid, right? And we know the conjugated base of a strong acid it is neutral. Okay. Since it is neutral, then when you change your pH, you are not going to change the solubility. Okay, so therefore you know this one won't have change of in terms of solubility. Okay, so when we're talking about this, what are the seven strong acid? You take your memory. HI? Okay, let's memorize in the correct order, okay? H I H D R H C L O four, and then and then and then H N O three. So these are the seven strong acid, right? So the order matters, okay? So if you see the conjugate base of this seven, okay, let those anionic species. Once they dissociate, it will be neutral. Okay. Then when you actually add in H plus, it's not going to affect its solubility. Okay. Therefore, you know this one cannot be your answer. Okay. 
let's look at the second. This one will become Ca2 plus and then Cl minus. Okay, Cl minus is a conjugated base of HCl, a strong base, right? Therefore, it is also neutral, right? Therefore, it's not going to be affected. Okay. Third one. This will become Ca2 plus and then 2 OH minus, right? OH minus it is a strong base, right? Therefore, when you add in your H plus, the OH minus will be consumed. And then in compensation for that uh, consumption, okay, the reaction will move to the right, therefore the solubility will increase. Okay, so this is actually one of the answers that you should actually choose. Okay, the fourth one, this will be Cu plus and then Co minus. Okay, so it's the same as this, right? So you know, adding the H plus doesn't affect its solubility. Okay, the very last one will be Ba2 plus and then CRO4 2 minus. Okay. So what is the property of this CRO4 2 minus? Is it a neutral or is it basic? Okay, so if you see this anionic species, right? If it doesn't belong to the conjugated base of seven strong acid, then it must be a weak one. Okay, so this one will be actually a weak base. Okay. So since it's actually a weak base, you will actually interact with your H plus. Okay, therefore the solubility will increase. Alright, so this is actually how you decipher all this question. Okay, but the key is actually to know once you will sort dissociate for those NIR to let belongs to neutral or belongs to strong or weak base. Okay, if it belongs to the strong or weak base, then adding the H plus will actually increase the solubility. All right, any questions? Cool. Okay, so the very last one is actually the common ion effect calculations, okay? The key is actually always use the small x approximation. I will just give you examples so that you can understand what I mean over there. So it says the KSP of this species is this value. What is the solubility of this species in this kind of solution? Okay, so again, Keyword is again the solubility and the KST, right? So once you see that, the first step is always write out the chemical equation. Okay. So AL OH3 is going to produce AL3 plus plus 3 OH minus. Okay, so this is actually the most important step for this type of questions. They always write out the correct chemical equation. Okay, and then you know the KSP, which is equals to Al3 plus first power OH minus concentration to the cube. Okay, and then this is going to equals to 1.0 times 10 to the negative 33. All right, so let's actually the first step. The second step is actually it's going to tell you, okay, I'm going to put this reaction or put this solute into a specific solution. Okay, in this specific question, we know the solution you're going to put in is Al. NO3, three. Okay, so typically the solution you're going to put in, okay, is always a soluble salt, meaning it will actually dissociate 
to produce AL3 plus and then NO3 minus. Okay, are you going to generate three of it? Okay. So we say the concentration of this is 0 0.010 M. Okay. Since it is a soluble salt, therefore it's going to be fully converted to your AG AL3 plus and then NO3 minus. Okay. Now it's actually a time that you want to pay attention to the coefficient. Okay. Since the coefficient between your AL3 plus and to the AL NO3 3, therefore you know once it is associated 100%, you are going to get 0 0.010 M of AL3 plus. Okay. And then for your NO3 minus, because coefficient is actually 1, 2, 3, therefore you know the concentration will be 0 0.010 multiply 3 and for your NO3 minus. Okay, so let's actually the second step. Okay, you need to actually analyze what is the solution that you're going to have. Okay, so once you do that, then you want to compare these two equations. Okay, then you will see there's actually something appear in common, right? So AL3 plus is actually the common ions between the two equations. Okay, and this one will actually produce a lot more of AL3 plus. Okay, so once you mix them together, okay, this guy will actually become the dominant concentration for your AL3 plus. Okay, so with that being said, they say you want to say you want to know the solubility of your AlOH3, right? If without this complication, you know, based on the coefficient, you are going to put S for your Al3 plus. You are going to put 3S for your OH minus, right? But since right now, you put it into a solution that's going to bring in a lot of Al3 plus. Therefore, in your solution, the final concentration of your Al3 plus will be 0 0.010 plus S. And then the concentration of your OH minus will equal to 3S. Okay, so this is actually the most important part of this question. Okay, you want to actually know effectively what is the concentration for your AO3 plus? What is the concentration of your OH minus? Okay. So once you have this, then you know the KSP, which equals to this, right? So it will equal to 0 0.010 plus S multiply S 3S to the Q. Okay. So once you do that, You are going to get. Oh, here is actually things that you want to use the small x approximation. Okay, so because you know for this insoluble salt, this solubility will always be very small. Okay, so what we can do is actually we use the small x approximation. Then the first term become 0 0.010. 0. The second term will be 3s cubed. Okay, so this will be 0 0.010 times 27s to the cube. And this whole term will equal to like constant 1.0 times 10 to the negative 33. Okay, so from here you can just solve for your solubility. Okay, so meaning 27s cubed is going to equal to 1 times 10 to the negative 31. So the S cube is going to equal to divided by 27. Okay, and then you take the cubic root of this, then you can get a number of 1.55 times 10 to the negative 11. Okay, so this is actually how you solve this type of question. Okay, so recap this. 
for this type of questions, okay, the first sentence again is telling you, okay, there's actually one insoluble salt with a KSP of certain value. Okay, so this sentence will allow you to write out the target equations, and then you should know how to actually write out the KSP equation like this. Okay, and then you say you want to put these things into a solution, okay, where the solution it has a soluble salt. What's that sort of a salt dissociates want to produce a common ion? Okay. To your target equation, okay, it can either produce a lot of Al3 plus or it produce a lot of OH minus. Okay. So once you figure out that, you want to actually write out, okay, what is actually the effective, uh, what is the actual concentration of those two species? Okay. And then plug in those things into your KSP equation. And then use the small x approximation. Then, in combination of the constant of your KSP, we can compute the solubility. Okay, so this is actually a very uh, typical common ion effect type of calculation. All right, so these are the four question types you're going to encounter in this chapter. Okay, so calculation wise, it's actually uh, a lot more straightforward compared to chapter 13 and 14. Okay, so let's all for the chapter 15. Any questions? Okay, so if not, we'll go through this review questions. Okay, you're going to see things is actually very, very similar. Okay, so let's start from the question number 13. So it says at 25 degrees C, the solubility of the certain compound is certain molar solubility. I calculate the value of KSP at the temperature. Okay. So again, the keyword is actually solubility, right? So the first step for the solubility question is always write out the chemical equations, right? So The barium carbonate okay, is actually the things that you probably need to actually have some sense. Okay. Barium is actually the BA. Okay, carbonate is actually CO32 minus. Okay, so that you know this one is BA CO3. Okay, and then it will dissociate. Once it dissociates, it becomes Ba2 plus plus CO3 2 minus. Okay, and this will be in the aqueous solution. Okay, and then you should know that the KSP equation will equal to the Ba2 plus times your CO3 2 minus. Okay. And you want to know the solubility of this guy, right? That means actually how much of that will actually dissociate. Okay. So then you start to actually look at the coefficients. The coefficient is always, in this case, is one to one, right? Therefore, you know the Ba2 plus solubility will be S. The CO3 2 minus will be S, right? Therefore, you know your KSP will simply equal to S times S, which is actually S squared. The only thing you want to be careful is that you want to make sure when you compute your KSP, you must use the molar solubility, right? Then you check out the unit. Okay, it's mole per liter, right? So this is actually a molar solubility. Let me say you can just use it as it is. Therefore, this will just equal to 9.00 times 10 to the negative 5 times 9.00 times 10 to the negative 5. Okay, so when you do that compute, computation, you're going to get 8.1 times 10 to the negative 9, and they will be actually your KSP. Okay, so this is actually how straightforward this type of calculation is. Okay, so the two things that you want to be careful first is that 
you always need to write out the proper chemical equation, right? Because once the coefficient change, the equation for your KSP will change accordingly, right? And then when you compute that solubility of each individual species, it will change based on the coefficient that you have. Okay. Second thing is actually you must use the molar solubility. Okay, so in this case, it's actually a simpler case, right? You actually always already give you the molar solubility. So you don't need to actually do the uh, conversion between the grain solubility to molar solubility. Okay. So this is actually how you solve the question number 13. Okay, question number 14. Okay, well, let's read through this one, okay? The KSP of HGCL is this value. Consider a solution have certain concentration of CaCO2, certain concentration of HNO3. Okay, so again, this is actually a very standard question you're going to encounter, right? It tell, in the first sentence of the question tells you the KSP of a specific species. Okay, and then the second sentence tell you the concentration of each individual uh, product, right? So that is actually the typical structure you're going to see for this QSP type of questions, okay? So again, the way to solve it is actually first write out the chemical equations, AgCl solid, is going to become Ag plus Aq plus Cl minus Aq. The Ksp will equals to Ag plus first power, Cl minus first power equals to 1.6 times 10 to the negative 10. Okay. So that's actually why we should actually write down from the first sentence. The second sentence will start to actually describe the concentration of these two terms. Okay, so you see you have that much of CaCO2. Okay, so 1.0 times 10 to the negative 9 CaCO2. Okay, so if you have become very experienced for these hard questions, okay, you will be able to say apparently this one is going to ask you to provide you the information of your CO minus concentration, right? And then you can see there's actually coefficient right here, right? It's CL2. That means your CO, CO minus concentration will be two times 10 to the negative nine N. Okay. The second species that you have is 1.0 times 10 to the negative one. AgNO3. So apparently, this one is going to tell you the concentration of Ag plus. Okay, so you can see the coefficient is one, right? Therefore, your Ag plus will have a concentration of 1.0 times 10 to the negative 1 m. Okay. So once you have the information about the concentration of H plus, the concentration of the Cl minus, then what you do next is to calculate your QSP, right? And the QSP is actually compute this way, right? So Ag plus to the first power, Cl minus to the first power, okay? There will be 1.0 times 10 to the negative one, multiply two times 10 to the negative nine, this will give you a value of two times 10 to the negative 10. Okay, and then you can compare to that KSP. Therefore, we know the QSP is larger than your KSP. Therefore, you are going to see the precipitate. Okay, so it's the same logic. It's actually very similar to the things we actually went through uh, previously. All right, that's actually how you solve question number 14. Okay, any question for this? Okay, so if not, let's do this one. 
One liter of saturated solution of CF2 contains 0 0.016 grain of dissolved CaF2. Where what is the KSP of CaF2? Okay, so again, you know your target is CaF2, right? It's going to become Ca. 2 plus plus 2f minus. Okay, your Ksp will equals to Ca2 plus to the first power, f minus to the second power. Okay, so that is actually always, always the first step. Okay, so since you want to know the KSP, right? Then you want to know, they say the solubility of this guy is S. Okay, and then because the coefficient between your CAF2 and the CA2 plus is one to one, right? Therefore, you can actually write S here. For your F minus, you are going to write 2S because the coefficient is actually one to two. Okay, therefore you write 2S here, okay? With that being said, then you know your KSP will equals to S, 2S to the square, right? So once you have this, then you know what you're going to have is actually 4S cubed. So your KSP can be computed with this 4S cubed equation, okay? So now the question is actually, can you actually compute the solubility from the information you got from the question again, right? So what it says, you have that much of this guy dissolved in one liter, right? So what it says is actually the solubility will equals to, again, this will be the molar solubility. Okay, therefore we want to actually compute how many more of these species got dissolved, right? So it tells you the mass that got dissolved is 0 0.0167 gram. The molecular weight is 78.1 gram per mole. Okay, so when you do this operation, when you do this operation, you got the moles of CF2 dissolved inside your solution, okay? And it also tells you all these things are actually dissolved in one liter of the solution, right? Therefore, you know the volume is actually one. When you do these calculations, you can actually figure out your S is going to equal to 2.14 times 10 to the negative 4, okay? So that is actually your solubility. Once you have this value, all you need to do next is actually just dump into this equation, okay? Therefore, your KSP is going to equal to 4 times 2.14 times 10 to the negative 4 to the cube, okay? And then once you do like computation, you should be able to get a number of 3.91 times 10 to the negative 11. Okay. So this is another type of question you are going to uh, encounter. So again, it's the same, the same way of solving the problem, right? You always need to actually write out the first equation. Okay. And then you always need to know how to write your KSP equation. Okay. Then you should know, okay, if you translate into a solubility, how to write the things, okay? And then you should know that solubility must use the unit of molar solubility. Okay, so let, that's all pretty much. All right, so any question for this one? Okay, next one. So it says, what is the solubility of CaF2? where the KSP is four times 10 to negative 12 in 0.35N of NAF. Okay, so this again is a 
common ion type of calculation, right? So again, you know, CaF2 is going to become Ca2 plus plus 2 F minus aqueous aqueous the KSP will equals to Ca2 plus times F minus to the second power. Okay. So if you look at And then these things it will equal to four times ten to the negative twelve. Okay, so let's actually what you get from this part. Okay. And it says if you put this salt in a solution, okay, so you have 0 0.035 M an AF. Okay, so if you look at this, and then together with the equation that you have. What this is going to tell you is that okay, you're going to produce F minus with a concentration of 0 0.035 M. Right? So let's say the solubility of your CA plus is S, F minus will be 2S. Again, this comes from the coefficient. This is actually one to one. Therefore, we put S here. This is actually one to two, one to two. Therefore, we put two s here. Okay. And then in this specific solution, you know you're going to produce a lot of the F minus, which is actually a common ion here, right? Therefore, you know the Ca two plus concentration can be represented as S. F minus concentration will be 0 0.035 plus. 2s. Okay, and then here we can always use small x approximation, therefore it becomes 0.035. Okay, so once you have these two, you're going to put this in there, put this in there. Okay, so you know s times 0 0.035 to the second power is going to equal to 4 times 10 to the negative 12. Okay, therefore you can solve your S, which is going to equal to four times 10 to the negative 12 divided by 0 0.035 square. And then you are going to get a value of three point three times 10 to the negative nine. Okay, so there will be actually the solubility of the CAF2. Okay. All right, so next question. For which salt in each of the following group will the solubility depending on pH? Okay, so again, this is actually questions that you want to actually look at the anionic species. Okay, if it's actually neutral, then no effect. If it's actually a strong base or weak base, then it will be affected by the pH, right? So let's look at this. The anionic species here is actually F minus. This one will be CO minus, right? So F minus is. I hope by now you should see this. Okay, F minus is actually a weak base, right? Cl minus is neutral. Okay, therefore you know this guy will be the one where its solubility will depending on the pH. Okay. Second, ionic species here is NO3 minus, right? This will be neutral because it's conjugate base of HNO3, right? This one is NO2 minus. This will be weak base. Therefore, it will depend on the pH. Everybody follow or I'm going too fast? 
Everybody's fine? So the key is actually you want to see the anionic species. If it is weak, at, weak base or strong base, then its solubility will depend on the pH, right? Because pH is actually the one that's going to introduce the extra uh, H plus. Okay. If it's neutral, then it's actually no effect. Okay, so go back to this. This will give you the OH minus. This will give you Cl minus. Cl minus will be neutral. OH minus apparently is actually a strong base, right? Therefore, if you add in H plus, then the solubility of this guy will increase. Okay, next one. This will be um, O3 minus. This one will be CM minus. Again, this is actually the conjugate base of HNO3, therefore it will be neutral. This one will be the weak base. Therefore, it will be sensitive to the pH change. Okay, so, so those are the things that um, you should know. Once you see these things, then so many sub questions become actually very straightforward. All right, so the very last question we want to go through today is this. So the KSP of this species is a certain number. Okay, what is the solubility of Ag2SO4 in this specific uh, solution? So again, it's actually a common -on type of calculation. Okay, we've done this for many, many times. Okay, again, starting by writing out the equations. Okay, the KSP will equals to Ag plus square multiply SO4 2 minus first power. Okay, and then this thing is going to equals to 1.2 times 10 to the negative 5. Okay, and then when we look at this equation, this species 0.25m AgNO3. Okay, apparently this one is trying to tell you the Ag concentration that can be contributed from this specific uh, solution. Okay, so hopefully by now you will see the Ag plus concentration will also equal to 0.25m. Okay, so with this being said, okay, here you should know the solubility of your Ag plus will be 2s. SO4 2 minus will be S. Okay. So the total Ag plus concentration will be 0.25 plus 2S. The SO4 2 minus concentration will equal to just S. And we can use small at approximation. Therefore, this one will actually equal to 0.25. Okay. Once we have this, then we put it back to this equation, therefore 0.25 times S equals to 1.2 times 10 to the negative five. Therefore S is equals to 1.2 times 10 to the negative five divided by 0.25. Okay, this should be a square, sorry, 0.25 square. Okay, so once you do that, then you will be able to get an answer of 1.92 times 10 to the negative four. Okay, and that's actually how you solve this question. Okay, so again, it's actually a common -on type of calculation. Okay. So this actually concludes all the question I want to go through today. Okay, but there's actually one thing I want to actually remind everybody. So because you do all the uh, exams on the website, right? So when you go to CASA, you actually go to that uh, website to do a lot of click. Okay. So when actually trying to grade your answers, okay, one thing I noticed is that when you enter your pH value, okay, your pH value, okay, or when you actually enter the concentration when you do the uh, solubility calculation, Make sure 
you put two digits below the uh, decimal point. Okay. It is weird, but it is actually somehow the system will actually only consider after input two digits after your decimal point, then they will actually grade it correctly. Okay, so sometimes people actually lost the credit because they didn't actually em enter enough digits after decimal point. Okay, so make sure you actually at least enter two digits below the uh, decimal point. Okay, so that will be it for today's lectures. On Thursday, we're going to review chapter 13 and chapter 14. All right. Mm -hmm. So uh, putting disregarding significant figures and always putting two uh, numbers after the decimal point, will that be the same for the exam as well? Or should mm -hmm. we? OK, mm -hmm. so just ignore the significant figures when it's asking for pH. Yes. OK, <laughs> <laughs> I know it's weird, but let's let's what, what I what, how I was talking.